Pollinators are a very important part of our ecosystem services. They're very important for uh, providing food. Uh, they pollinate about 75% of our crops. Uh, but they're also very important for supporting natural ecosystems, our non-crop habitats. The most pollination service is provided by bees. And there's increasing evidence that uh, bees are in decline in some parts of the world. And this is because they're facing uh, global stresses such as climate change, uh, the increased use of pesticides, uh, land use change that leads to shortage in food, but also disease is an increasingly important stressor. And these stresses are particularly important when they interact, so a diseased bee may be much more susceptible to the effects of a pesticide. Now here at Kew, uh, we're studying plants to see if we can understand how they provision for bees, for better health in bees, including the nutritional quality, but also we're looking at the secondary metabolites to find out how bees can benefit from consuming these in their normal diet, in pollen or in nectar. Secondary metabolites and nectar may have medicinal benefits for pollinators. In our study, we focused on Petitia bombi, a common unicellular eukaryotic parasite of bumblebees. It resides in the gut of bumblebees and is transmitted in feces either on flowers or in the nest environment. We selected 17 important food plants for bumblebees in Europe and extracted the secondary metabolites contained in their nectar using monofloral honeys. We tested the extracts of these monofloral honeys against an in vitro culture of Gratidia bombi. The extract with the strongest inhibitory activity was from heather. Coluna vulgaris. We then identified the active principle behind the inhibition of Cretidia by bioactivity guided fractionation. We partitioned the metabolites in heather honey extract by polarity with flash chromatography and semi preparative HPLC and tested fractions against Cretidia in vitro. Using mass spectrometry, we identified a single compound in one of the fractions that explained the activity against the parasite. We used nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy to determine the structure of this compound. A combination of proton NMR, carbon-13 NMR and 2D NMR techniques revealed the compound as an alenic megastigmine. We named this compound calonine after the heather plant Caluna vulgaris. Next, we went into the field to sample nectar directly from heather. This verified that calonine occurs naturally in heather nectar at concentrations sufficient for complete cretidia inhibition. We also analyzed the crops of buff-tailed bumblebees foraging on heather and found calonine present at high concentrations. To directly test the effects of calonine on cretidia infections in bumblebees, we conducted a range of in vivo experiments with buff-tailed bumblebees in the lab. Bumblebees that fed on nectar-relevant concentrations did not show a reduction in existing Crithidia infections. However, when bumblebees fed on calonine before oral inoculation with the parasite, or when the parasite was exposed to calonine for 60 minutes before being fed to the bumblebees, we observed a reduction in infections, suggesting a prophylactic effect. To understand why calonine might have a prophylactic but not curative effect, we first microscopically examined the effects of calonine on Cretidia directly. Unexposed Cretidia cells had a fully functional long flagellum which they used to rapidly propel themselves forward. Calonine exposed cells, on the other hand, had lost the functional flagellum and showed no active movement. This effect occurred with a concentration and time period of calonine exposure that the parasite would experience in the field during passage through the crop of foraging bumblebees. When we looked at the location of the parasite within the gut of infected bumblebees, we found that infections were restricted to the hindgut. Cretidia cells formed a layer around the epithelium of the ileum. The parasites were attached to the ileum epithelium with their flagellum. The flagellum therefore appears to play an essential role for this parasite, both for motility and for attachment to the host. Losing the flagellum via calonine might mean that the parasite becomes unable to establish an infection in the gut. At the same time, chemical analyses showed that calonine is not reaching the hindgut of the bumblebee, presumably because it is degraded in the midgut. In summary, our experiments suggest that calonine can act prophylactically for bumblebees by inducing the loss of the flagellum in Cretidia bombi. 
At the same time, existing infections remain unaffected by calonine ingestion, as the compound is not reaching the hindgut as site of infection. Our study shows that pollinators like the buff-tailed bumblebee can gain prophylactic benefits from a nectar metabolite like calonine and caluna heather. This is potentially quite relevant in an ecological context in Europe, where heather is one of the dominant fruit plants for bumblebees, including being the second most productive nectar sugar producing plants in the UK. At the same time, it's also slightly worrying because heathlands, including Kaluna dominated heathlands, have declined quite rapidly in Europe, including an 85% decline of lowland heathlands in the United Kingdom in the last century. So potentially pollinators might be losing a major medicinal plant for themselves here. We are still at the beginning of understanding the potential medicinal value of plants for pollinators. Identifying and protecting key plants that promote pollinator health will be important to safeguard pollinators in the future.